last time we looked at journals, we looked at five and six. Okay, we're obviously applying the accounting rules. We know we've got definitions for assets, liabilities, income, expenses, capital, and drawings. And when applying the rules, you're going to be interpreting transactions and you're going to be processing the, the data. So we know that transactions are recorded on source documents. And where do the source documents get recorded? In the journals. Okay, so we looked at the theory relating to a journal. What does a journal do? It groups similar types of transactions. So when I have a cash receipts journal, I'm recording all my cash receipts. When I have a cash payments journal, I'm recording all my cash payments. So that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the processing of accounting information or data. Just to show you what the textbook has given you, obviously you guys can go through this yourself. Um, the notes that you have give you the most important bits and pieces from here. Okay, what I do want to focus on is the journals. Cash receipts and cash payments. What's the focus there? Bank. Bank is either going to go up or bank is going to go down, depending on what's happening. Are we receiving or are we paying? Purchases and purchases returns. Those two relate to the creditor. Okay, we buy from our supplier. We buy from a creditor. The creditor is going to be seen as a liability. So if I'm buying, the liability is going to go up. If I'm returning, the liability is going to go down. And then you've got sales and sales returns. Same thing applies here. The focus, though, is on debtors. Okay, and debtors will either go up or debtors will go down, depending on what's happening. Are we selling to them or are they returning to us? Okay, then you've got a note about the general journal, which is for other transactions. Okay, so that's what the textbook takes you through. Well, not textbook, the study guide. Okay, the textbook is also very good. A good source of information gives you additional info related to the journals. Right, we now need to approach a question looking at journals. So let's go to the template that I've given you. Right, obviously in an exam, um, you don't often get given templates. You get given folio paper that you're going to have to complete, all right, in terms of your format in order to draw up the journals. So I've got the sales journal, the purchases journal, the sales returns, the purchases returns, and the receipts and payments okay, on separate pages. We're going to be looking at another, another question from the past paper that we looked at last week. Last week we started with October, November 2016. I already looked at one question with you, the accounting equation. Now I'm going to be looking at this question, the subsidiary journals. 25 marks, 30 minutes. We're looking at the journal. If it's a journal, it's focusing on the recording of transactions. Okay, so the first bit is looking at interpretation. Do you know what's happening in each of these different scenarios? Okay, before I do it, I just want you guys to tell me what journal is this going to go to? Okay, you don't have to worry about all the accounts. A lot of this we haven't covered yet. A lot of it we have. Okay, it, it, it just depends on uh, what questions they've given you in the actual um, test okay, or exam. Right, so what I want you to go do now is to go down the list and tell me what journal do you think this is going to go to. I'll do the first one. Issued a check as a repayment of a loan. If you're issuing a check, it's a cash payment, CPJ. So that first transaction will be recorded in the cash payments journal. But I want you to do the same thing for all the other transactions. Just tell me what journal it goes to. Don't worry about debits and credits and all of that. We'll discuss that together. Can you interpret what's happening? So are you buying something? Are you receiving something? Are you returning something? What's happening? Okay, quickly do that. Alright, so you guys have had some time now to go through each of those transactions to identify what journal you think those transactions are going to have to be recorded in. Right, so now I'm going to do the question and then check if you're right. Okay, so when we look at number two, obviously it's a purchase and you're buying an automatic washing machine um, from Top Tops Laundry and you paid by check. Again, CPJ. Right, so we're going to look at all of them. As I go through them, we're going to record as well. Right, this question in the exam paper is out of 25, it's 30 minutes long. When looking at the required, it says open the following subsidiary journals for the month ended. 
and the counting records of um, Helicy cleaning services and record the above transactions in the relevant subsidiary journals. They want us to draw up a cash receipts journal and they want us to make provision for the following columns. Date, details, bank, services rendered, output, VAT, debtors control, sundry accounts. So let's go to our journals. Okay, we've got our journal here. We're looking at the cash receipts. So there's my cash receipts journal. But what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be creating a cash receipts journal for this business. What else do they want? They want a cash payments journal. So I need to create a cash payments journal and I need to draw up that or draw that up for this particular business. Okay, so question one is looking at journals. This was A and this was B. Right, you guys don't have to draw that. There's extra copies here. So just give one to Given. He doesn't have. Okay, you obviously have other journals as well. <coughs> cash receipts and payments aren't the only journals that you get, but they're all the same. It doesn't matter what the journal looks like. It's just recording a similar type of transaction. So all my credit purchases will go to the purchases journal. All my credit sales will go to the sales journal. It doesn't matter what the journal looks like or what the journal does in terms of grouping a similar transaction. The way that you complete it is the same. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is the same as what I would do for any of the other journals. Right, so what do they want here? They want the date, the details, the bank. Okay, we've got date, we've got details, let's write in bank. What else do they want? Services rendered, output VAT. Output VAT. There we go. What else do we want? Um, debtors control and then sundry. So we need one more column debtors control and then obviously the sundry so that's it for the cash receipts journal let's look at the cash payments what do they want here date details bank cleaning and packing materials okay so bank here and then is cleaning and packing one account or separate it looks like one account or maybe separate cleaning and packing materials Okay, it's worded strangely. Maybe they want us to group it. Maybe they want us to keep it separate. I'm going to show it separate. Cleaning materials, because they are different things. Packing materials, material. And then they want sundry. Great. So that's what we've got for the cash receipts and cash payments. Now we're going to have to go to the question and we're going to have to look at each of those line items and we're going to have to post them where they need to go. A journal that's used for other transactions is the general journal. Okay, so that's going to be a separate journal and the general journal is very easy to do. It's literally a debit and a credit. You would write in something there, you'd write in something there. Okay, I just want to show you sample. Sample general journal entry. Okay, and then you'll have a debit column and you'll have a credit column. And this is what you would do for a general journal. Okay, that's, all that, that's also something that they wanted in this question. And this was obviously number C. Okay, general journal. So that's what you're going to be doing that you would have to do on a separate page. Okay, so I haven't given you a template for that because there's not much of a template. It's literally two columns. Debit, credit, and then we need to record. Okay. Let's go back to the question. Have I got everything? Yes. I've got A, I've got B, I've got C. See, this is exam technique. Once you've got everything, then you're going to go back to the question. Here's the question. And you're going to take it line by line by line, and you're going to record it where it needs to go. We just read something important. They are a registered VAT vendor. So what does that mean? Is that applicable? Yes. You'll have input and you'll have output. How do we remember the difference? When goods come in, you're buying goods. There's input VAT because you pay the 14% to the person you're buying from. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you're paying the VAT, you can claim it from 
SARS. Okay, if I'm selling, goods are going out. So I have output VAT. Why does goods why 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 is it considered output VAT? It's because I'm collecting the VAT, but it's not mine. Okay, so imagine selling something. Let's say you're selling um, cold drink. Okay, Coca Cola. If you're selling cold drink, there'll be fourteen percent VAT. You're collecting it because you're selling it, but it's not your income. It needs to be paid over to SARS. Okay, so the VAT that you're paying on that particular item is considered a liability because it's an output VAT line item. Output VAT is a liability. Input VAT is obviously an asset. Okay, so depending on what you've got, but we need to consider that. They told us VAT is applicable at 14%. Let's have a look at number one. Issued a check to Anco Bank as a repayment on a loan. If I'm paying off a loan, bank will decrease. Bank is an asset. If bank is an asset that's decreasing, this must be recorded in the cash payments journal. Because we said in the notes that if bank is decreasing, it's seen as a payment. It doesn't matter why it's decreasing. I'm, I could be paying off a loan. I could be buying an asset. I could be buying or paying for expenses it doesn't matter it's still going to reduce your bank and if you're reducing your bank you're going to record that in your cash payments so this amount is going to the cash payments journal All right, so this is how you record it obviously they give you a document number you would put it in they didn't so I'm just going to put in the day the name of the payee was Anco Bank How much did I pay? 2,200. Do I have a column for the loan? No. So sundry accounts is for other accounts. Sundry is when you don't write down a separate column for it. So that means I need to show 2,200 here because there was no column for the loan. And that's how you record transactions. Okay, so you credit the bank because you're reducing the bank and you're debiting the loan because you're reducing the liability. Right, see those are basic, let's say, understanding of the transactions that we practiced previously when we looked at debits and credits. Okay, debits and credits don't actually mean much in a journal because the journal is just recording of the transaction. It's when I post the journal to the ledger, then I need to know what is being debited and what is being credited. Okay, so it's not so important here. So you don't really have to look at what do I debit, what do I credit. It's good to know what to debit and credit because when you post the journal, then it's important. Number two, purchase an automatic washing machine. What business are we in? The cleaning services business, right? If I'm a cleaning service business and I'm using the periodic system, am I going to be selling washing machines? No. So this is not going to be considered stock. Do you agree? I'm not going to be buying a washing machine to sell it. I'm going to be buying a washing machine to use it. Right, so if I'm using that asset, it's going to be considered equipment. Okay, it meets the definition of an asset. This was from Top of Tops. This was on the second. Top of Tops. Laundry. Bank is going to go down by 3,200. Is there going to be VAT on this transaction? Yes. Okay, when you buy something, you're going to have input VAT because you're buying something. So this 3,200, they said VAT is included where applicable. So is it applicable here? Of course it is. Okay, if you buy a washing machine, you're going to have to pay 14% VAT. So if I'm paying 14% VAT, I'm going to claim that. So I need to show that separately. Did they ask for a VAT column? No, they didn't. They should have, but they didn't. Okay, so I'm going to have to record this as sundry accounts. So when looking at top of tops laundry, the bank account is going to go down by the full amount, which was 3,200. 
a portion of this is VAT. Okay, you guys have columns, so actually let's add a column. Okay, let's make use of the columns, input VAT. Okay, because other examples will have the column, instead of writing everything in sundry, because it's going to get quite messy if we do, okay. Right, what did I buy? Equipment. I'm going to be using the machine. What am I going to show here? I'm going to show the brackets VAT exclusive amount. And then in VAT, I'm going to show the VAT amount. Right, so how do I get the VAT amount? I take the 3,200, I times it by 100, I divide it by 114. Okay, that gives me that answer, round it to the nearest cent. Okay, let's round off to the nearest rand, actually. Uh, or did they say anything about rounding in the question here? No, they didn't. Okay, problematic. So then you would round off to the nearest cent. Um, I'm going to keep it simple and round off to the nearest rand. So we don't have such a big amount there. Okay, how did I get that? 3200 times 100 divided by 114. That's how you get your VAT exclusive amount. If you didn't know how to do that, then you need to look at your tutorial letter. Okay, in your tutorial letter, there's a few pages that talk about some mathematics, some fractions, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, all of that. And they give you some examples of this. Okay, so obviously I'm taking you through the accounting, but you need some mathematics in order to do the accounting. This is what you use to get the VAT exclusive amounts. Once I've got VAT exclusive, then it's easy to get the VAT. I just take the inclusive and I minus the exclusive. Okay, that was the VAT inclusive. Right, because you know that, maybe just to show that down here, VAT exclusive plus VAT gives you VAT inclusive. So if this is 100, you would add 14, you would get 114. Okay, that's where that's coming from. Again, that comes from the mathematics, that comes from your tutorial letter. Go through that if you, if you need to. This is what you're going to type into your calculator. Happy with that one? Okay. Next. Number four. Total services rendered for cash register roll. Where did you guys say I must put this? Which journal? Cash receipts. Good. Okay, you're getting cash because this would have gone to the cash register. Cash register roll. Someone asked for services and they paid you using cash. Six and a half thousand is going to be received and that's for day number four. So day four, this came from who? They don't mention it, but they tell you this was services rendered. Um, you can just say cash or services. I'm going to write services rendered. Why not? Be more specific. You could just say cash if you wanted to. But if they gave you a name of a person, you would put it in there. Okay, how much did we get? Six and a half. Would there be VAT on this transaction? Of course there will. You're providing a service. So SARS is going to want you to collect 14% on that service. So where am I going to put the total? Well, do I collect the full amount? Yes. I'm going to collect 6,500 from the customer. But am I going to be entitled to the 6,500? No, because that's the VAT inclusive. A portion is mine, which is the VAT exclusive, and a portion is SARS's. Okay, so I need to pay 14% over to SARS because I'm running a business and I'm a VAT vendor. Right, so what am I going to have to do? Well, I need to separate. Okay, so again, take that amount, times it by 100, divided by 114. That's how you get the VAT exclusive. Again, I'm just going to round it off to the nearest rand, just to keep it simple, and then I'm going to subtract the VAT inclusive minus the exclusive, and that's going to give me the output VAT. Right, so maybe just to show that working, it's 6.5, times 100 divided by 114. If you're wondering how I got the 5702. Okay, obviously, this you could show in the exam if you wanted to. As long as you've got the right answer, they'll probably mark it right. But in case you make a mistake, maybe it's worthwhile showing a 
calculation. Okay, but this is what you're going to be recording. So the accountant generally is going to record that, and that's it. That's what the accountant would show. Make sense? Let's continue. Next. Purchase cleaning material from Quick Clean for 3250 and paid by check. Which journal? Cash payments. Quick Clean, good, on the 10th. On the 10th, Quick Clean, we paid them how much? 3250. This was for cleaning material. Would there be VAT here? Of course there will. So again, VAT inclusive is going to go there. VAT is going to go here. Did I have a column for cleaning material? Yes. Am I going to use it? Of course I am. This times 100 divided by 114 is going to give me the VAT exclusive amount. That's how much the cleaning material is going to cost me taking out the VAT. So the bank minus the cleaning material gives me the input VAT of 399. And there's another transaction that we've recorded. Make sense? Question? Um, Sandry account, account you only use if there are other accounts where I don't have a column. Okay, so what did I buy here with Click Clean? Quick Clean. I bought cleaning material. Do I have a column for cleaning material? Yes, there's cleaning material. So I use that column, I don't use sundry. If I didn't have this column, then I would use sundry. Okay. Next, day 14, received 1.7 from P, a debtor in part settlement of his account. Which journal? Cash receipts, good. This was on the 14th. P. Oosthuizen. Amount, 1.7. Will there be VAT on a receipt from a debtor? No, there won't. Right, VAT will only arise when you buy or when you sell, not when you receive or pay. Okay, in terms of paying a debtor, uh, paying a creditor, or receiving money from a debtor. This is going to be recorded here in the debtor's control column. And that's it. There's your transaction representing the receipt from a debtor. No VAT on those receipts. Because the, um, the VAT would have arisen when you sold to the debtor. So when I sold on credit, then I would have the output VAT. Not when I received the money for outstanding payments. Make sense? Next. A check for 1280 received on 15 Jan from H. Hamill, a debtor, was returned by the bank marked RD check. Okay, obviously you guys will learn about RD checks when we cover theory related to the bank reconciliation. An RD check is a dishonored check. What does that mean? Well, that means someone wrote out a check, they gave it to you. You take that check, you go to your bank, and you deposit that check. A few days later, the check doesn't go through. Why? Because the person writing out the check didn't have any money in the account. So the bank wasn't able to transfer money from their account to your account. Okay, so checks aren't really used in today's world, but they're still given to you in your assessment. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Dishonored checks always go to the CPJ. That you can learn. It'll always go to the CPJ. It's dishonored. This was day 17. This was from Hamill. And this was for, what was the amount? 1280. 1280. I don't have a column for debtors. 1280. Debtors. Right, the reason why it's debtors is because it's a dishonored check. Previously, you thought you received, but you didn't. 
Okay, because remember, a receipt would have gone in the cash receipts journal. Got that? Next. A check for 1680 was issued by Hamill to replace the previous check. So this is a new transaction. And this took place when? On the 17th. So there was a dishonored check and then the issuing of a new check. Where is this going to go? Receipt or payments? Receipt. A debtor is issuing another check and they're giving it to you. So you're also going to have on the 17th, Hamill again, and you're going to show a receipt for 1,280. Same amount, right? No, different amounts. 1,680. 1,680. Oh. Oh. So they're, they're paying a bit more. 1,680. Oh. Do I have a column for debtors? Yes, I do. Will I use that column? Yes, I will. Make sense? You guys keeping up? So they actually report both when they receive Not both. They're separate transactions. So this is the cash payment. This is the cash receipt. Okay, CPJ, CRJ. They're two different transactions. Okay, this is the dishonored check. This is the reissuing of the check. There are two different transactions. Next, the new check for 1680 includes interest that was charged to his arrear account. Okay, so now we've got something else to consider. 1680. Was the interest being charged to his account? Yes. What is interest going to do to the debtor's account? Increase or decrease it? It's going to increase it. So where do you increase a debtor's account? On the debit side. Why? It's an asset that will increase. Why is the debtor's account increasing? Because you've charged them interest. If you're charging interest, is that an income or an expense? It's an income because you're going to get something, right? Okay, so therefore I credit the income and debit the debtors. Right, do I have a journal for, for interest? No. So where am I going to put this? I'm going to put this in the Sandry account. Good. No, not Sandry. General journal, yes. Sandry is for other accounts, not other transactions. Okay, so this needs to go to number C. Debit the debtors. This was day 17. Debtors is what type of account? An asset. And it's increasing. Credit the interest income. Income increasing. What am I going to record? I'm going to record the difference. How much does this debtor owe? 1,280. So 1680 less 1250 is going to give me the amount that I'm going to record here. Let's see what it is. 1680 minus 1280 gives me 400. Right? That's the amount that I'm going to record in the books of the business. Got that? The only reason why I'm showing this is because the question told me that we're charging the debtor interest. So now just think about it logically. If you're charging the debtor interest, are you going to have more debtors or less debtors? More. So where do I increase a debtor account? Well, I need to know what it is. Debtors is an asset. Assets increase on the debit. Why did I charge them interest? Because the account was overdue, probably. Okay, you guys.
guys have that? Great. Next, day 19. Cash banked for services rendered. Which journal? CRJ. Easy marks here. Okay, every single exam paper will always have easy marks. Guaranteed. Yes, there will be questions that are a bit more tricky, and there will be questions that are very difficult. Okay, it's because the examiner needs to give scope. Okay, so scope to pass, and then scope to get a distinction as well. Okay, so that's an easy one. No, there's no sale journal here because there's no selling. What type of business are we running? Cleaning services. Unless you're also selling cleaning material and other stuff, then you would have sales. Okay, this is a service business. So a service business would be selling a service. And that would be recorded in the cash receipts if they're receiving it cash. Services rendered. Will I have that here? Yes, I will. That will be on the total amount of 8230. 8230. Services rendered will be the VAT exclusive. So that amount times 100 divided by 114. That will be the difference. This minus that. Got that? Is that okay? Good. This is for services rendered. I have a column for that. I have a column for services rendered. I have a column for bank. We record it there. Next. 21. Purchase packing material on credit. Thoughts. Receipts or payments, which journal? On credit means creditors. So where is this going to go? General journal if you don't have a purchases journal. Okay, I don't know if they want me to record this or not in the general journal. I'm going to record it anyway because they gave it to you. Right, obviously this wouldn't go in the cash journals, right, because this was a purchase on credit. If it's, per if it's a purchase on credit, it's a creditor. Do you agree? You're owing them. Does it make sense? Right, so if I'm owing them, O'Reilly Cleaning Solutions is going to be seen as a creditor. I don't have a purchases journal. Right, you guys have one in your templates. You don't don't write it in. I just want to show you what it would have looked like. Okay, so this was the template that I printed for you. So if we look at purchases journal there, okay, you would have recorded it like this. Okay, don't write this anywhere because it's not part of the question. I'm just showing you what it would look like. You would have day 21. You would have had O'Reilly Solutions. Solution, cleaning solution. And then you would have had 650 in the creditors. Uh, six and a half, actually. And you would have shown what type of VAT here. Um, oh, lost the spot. There's it. We would have shown six and a half as the actual purchase. Then we would have shown output VAT. And then we would have shown uh, this was for packing material. This times 100 divided by 114. This minus that. Okay, this is what you would show if they asked you for the journal. They ask you for the journal. No, they didn't. Okay, but they gave you the general journal. So I can't record this here. I can't record that there. So where am I going to record it? Here in the general journal. Right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to show a debit for the packing material. 
expense increase. I'm going to show a credit, a debit actually for the VAT, input VAT. Ooh, did I write output here? Yo, that's wrong. If you're buying, it's input, not output. Sorry. Earlier I had output. That should have been input. Okay, but it's VAT. Right, purchases, if you're buying something, there's input VAT. And then I'm going to have credit the creditors, bracket liability increase. Input VAT is an asset increasing. Make sense? So the packing material is going to have an amount of, well, let's put the full amount, six and a half. Packing material is a six and a half times a hundred divided by one one four. Input VAT is going to be the difference, this minus that. And just to keep it simple, we're going to round it off to the nearest. Rand. And that's what you would record. What day was this? Day 21. Right, so I don't know if they want you to record this or not. It should have gone to the, C, uh, the PJ, okay? Purchase journal. It doesn't go to any of the cash journals. You have a general journal, so that's probably the next best thing. If you don't have a purchase journal, rather than just leaving it out. Okay, you might have just have been required to leave it out. Possibly. I don't know. I'm going to put it in just because I don't have a purchase journal to record it. Okay, rather than not putting in anything, and then they give marks for it, and then you don't get nothing. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Next. Issued a check for 11.4 to pay salaries and wages. Which journal? CPJ. Will there be VAT in this transaction? No. You don't get VAT on salaries and wages. Okay, salaries and wages isn't considered a product or a service. Okay, VAT, obviously we're not going to go into too much detail with regard to VAT and what the different suppliers are. Okay, that's more of a tax subject. Uh, we're just discussing it basic in terms of is there VAT on this? No, there isn't. There'll never be VAT on salaries and wages. When issuing a check, it's going to go to the CPJ. So in the CPJ, what day was this? Day 23? Cash, how much do I pay? 11,400, no column for salaries and wages. So 11,400 here, salaries and wages. Got that? And there's another transaction that you've recorded. See, this is how you record transactions in journals. It's so simple. You just need to understand what's happening in the transaction. Because the first step is the most important. That's why we spend such a lot of time going through the rules. Okay, because you don't know how, if you don't know what the rules are, you don't know what to do with those accounts. Okay. Next, paid city electric meters in settlement of the water and electricity account by means of an EFT. Which journal? Cash payments. Twenty-seven. City electric meters. How much do we pay them? 5,870, 5,870. Will there be VAT on water and electricity? Yes, there will be. So then we need to show it separately. So input VAT would have been the difference. We first need to work out the VAT exclusive. All right, so take that amount times by 100 divided by 114. That's going to give me that amount. That's for the water and electricity. Round off to the nearest cent, uh, rand, okay, just to avoid the cents, and then work out the difference. This minus that gives me the amount of input VAT that I'm going to recognize for this business. Make sense? Still okay? Next. 28. Issued a cash check to pay traffic fines for delivery vehicles. Right, will you have VAT on a traffic fine? No, you won't. Okay, the fine is the fine, there's no VAT. Issued a check, cash receipts or payment. 
payment. This was for a delivery vehicle, but this was the traffic fine actually, so 1,800. No VAT. You can write as cash, cash check, and this was for eight, eight, uh, 28. Okay. Make sense? Last one. Total interest received as per the bank statement amounted to 1320. Good or bad? Good. We're receiving interest. Which journal? No, this was received and shown where? On the bank statement. So if it's on the bank statement, would you have received money or paid money? You would have received money. This was interest that was credited to your account. Okay, so because this is in the bank statement, bank is going up or down if you're receiving it. It's going up. So bank goes up in which journal? Cash receipts journal. Day 29. What bank? They don't tell you. The bank. How much did I receive? 1320. Do I have a column for interest? No, I don't. Interest income. Makes sense. Got that. Not too bad, right? Now that I've got all of those transactions, what's the last bit? We've completed the question. Total up. You might or might not get marked for doing this. It's always, good, it's always a good idea to total, just in case. Sum up everything. And the same thing here at the bottom. Sum up everything. And that's another trick. That's another question done. Okay. All right. So October, November, twenty sixteen. You guys will be writing October, November, twenty seventeen. Okay. There may or may not be journals in that um, paper that's coming up, but last year this time, uh, when they wrote the the exam. They were obviously given a nice journal question. It's a nice question to do. It doesn't take too much effort or too much studying to get the right answer. The only thing you need to do is practice identifying what's happening in the transaction. Do I have a receipt? Do I have a payment? Do I have something other? Do I have a sale? Do I have a purchase? What are we actually looking at? Is it cash or is it credit? Okay. And that covers the journal bit. Okay, so at least now I've covered an exercise with you guys just to show you how to approach those questions. What I would suggest you guys do as practice is look at the actual chapter. Toward the end of the chapter, you'll see they've given you revision exercises. I want to put those up quick. Exercise one, exercise two. I think this was exercise two already. Might have skipped one. Okay, yeah, but there's exercise two. Okay, so there are revision exercises in the textbook, and then there's the journals. Okay, so this is a nice one. All right, looking at um, sunshine glass traders. Okay, exercise two in your textbook, page 100. Okay, obviously they've given you a trial balance. Okay, then they've given you transactions. Remember, transactions are recorded in journals. Right, so similar transactions will go to the same journal. Okay, then I would go down the list and I would identify what are receipts, what are payments. All the receipts go to the cash receipts journal. There's the cash receipts. All the payments go to the cash payments journal. Right, and you've got the solution as well. Okay, so you just need to practice getting from question to answer. Okay, that's the biggest challenge. 
And that's why I want to do past papers with you, because then you can see how to get from question to answer. Okay, because looking at this, that's great. Okay, you don't study accounting by looking at solutions and thinking, well, okay, that wasn't so bad, now I can do it. The thing is, you actually have to do it. Right, you have to do the question, and you have to check, did I do it right? Okay, then that's why you've been given a solution. Okay, it's to confirm that, okay, I know how to post. Right, because we've just done one. Um, here's the question. Same transactions, just a little bit different uh, in terms of wording and amounts and all of that. But the journals look like this. Okay, you're literally just taking those transactions and you're posting them to where they need to go. Okay, that's why I'm asking you guys to keep practicing. Because the only way you can get better at doing the subject is by practicing. It's, it's practical. Okay, I said this in the first week. Accounting isn't a cram subject. Okay, a lot of your law subjects are cram subjects. You can literally, the week before, open your books for the first time, study that stuff crazy, all right, have a massive memory, and you can pass. Okay, that doesn't work here. All right, cramming doesn't work at all because you need to practice. It's like driving. It's more a skill than anything else. Okay, it's like driving. Studying where the pedals are, studying where the indicators are, isn't going to make you a better driver. Okay, you need to get into the car and drive if you want to get if you want to become a better driver. Okay, so the same thing applies here. And that's why I'm encouraging you guys to try if you can practice. Okay, do those questions. You've got answers. You've got questions. If you get stuck, then bring it to class. Okay, bring things that you're struggling with. Maybe you've looked at that activity ahead of time and you didn't quite understand one of the transactions. Okay, maybe you didn't know. Uh, I'm just assuming. Let's say you, I, you didn't know this. Okay, you didn't know that cash sales was going to go to the CRJ. Okay, then bring it to class, ask me, and then I'll tell you where it should go. Okay, so on the 25th, we should have a cash sale. And we should have, was this a VAT vendor? Probably. Yes, they are. There's input VAT and output VAT. See, I can see them in the trial balance. I know they're a VAT vendor. So then what would I have done? I would have debited, debited, and credit. Uh, actually, two credits. Okay, because this is cash sales. So I would have output VAT. I would have sales. And I would have, this was cash sales bank. Okay, so it goes to the CRJ. I'm then going to show an amount. So my exclusive amount would have been sales, which would have been this figure, times 100 over 114. Okay, someone on your calculator quickly work that out. Can someone type in 6156 times 100 divided by 114? What do you get? Five thousand four hundred. Right. So now, do you guys all agree this should be in the CRJ? So if I go to my answer, there we go. There's the cash representing the sale. There's the exclusive. There's the VAT. There's the inclusive. Okay, and that's what we did, but for the exam question. Okay, so I'm just mentioning it again. Practice, 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 practice. It makes your life so much easier. Okay, because you're practicing week by week. So every week I'm giving you something to do. Okay, so week one was get, get to know your definitions, make sure you study your rules. Week two was can you interpret transactions correctly? Right, this week we're looking at practical stuff. So applying what we've learned so far. Okay, how do I draw up a journal? How do I post it through to the journal? Okay, how do I take the transaction to the journal? Okay, it's more a process. Once you know how to show that, then it's easy to get that. Okay, any other questions? The general journal. General journal. Yeah. What about it? The way of doing it. The general journal is actually your rules. Okay, so when I asked you guys earlier to apply the rule, debit what, credit what, okay, it takes you through the process. So you need to look at what account am I affecting? Is the account going up or is, is the account going down? Okay, so let's look at this one again, 21. When I read question 21, it says, purchase packing material on credit. There's the keyword, on credit. That already tells me that I'm going to have 
creditors because I'm buying something from them. Okay, if I'm buying something from them, is my liability going to go up or down? It's going to go up. Okay, because you know a creditor is a liability. So look at your rules. Okay, there's a, there's a rule in your notes. You need to go back and just look at that. Okay, there's a rule that looks like this. Liability plus on the credit side. Okay, so that's how I get the credits. Okay, so now I know it's credit the creditors. And then what am I buying? Packing material. Okay, packing material is an expense. I'm paying for it or buying it, so I'm going to increase it. There's the increase. So packing material, that's why I'm showing the bracket, expense increase. See, that's the reasoning behind getting the debit packing material. Okay, right, so it'll make more sense. Obviously, this is your first class. You need to go back and watch those other videos that will help with um, catching up. Okay, we've covered quite a bit, and the basics are very important. Okay, so, um, got your email, okay, you'll get access to it later today, and then when you have time, watch those two weeks, okay, we've just had two weeks before this one, okay, so there's not a lot, it's four hours that you need to catch up on, okay. Any other questions? Great. Let's save that, now we've, co we've covered another question from that past paper, that is question one. We're looking at support material, study unit seven and eight here in this set of notes. First bit we need to look at is background regarding cash and cash equivalents. That's study unit eight. So when I'm looking at cash and cash equivalents, a cash equivalent just means something that's similar to cash. Right, obviously cash is physical cash on hand. Right, bank would be a cash equivalent because it's not physical cash, it's money in the bank account. It's, it's like digital stuff. It's, it's, um, it's the computer's rec record of how much cash you've got in your accounts. Right, so that's cash and cash equivalents. And then chapter eight is just looking at theory regarding your trade and other receivables. Both of these are considered what type of account? What type of elements? Assets. Okay, topic C is looking at assets, either current assets or non-current assets. That's just the scope. So if I'm looking at an asset, you have a long-term or you have a short-term asset. Obviously, inventory we'll look at later on. That's a current asset. Property, plants, and equipment is a non-current asset. We'll look at all of those later. Right now, I'm just going to be looking at the journals, okay, and the debtors. Okay, well, when I say journals, cash journals, looking at bank recon. Okay, we'll do the bank recon question next week, um, but this week we're just going to cover the theory. When focusing on the cash journals, we've got two. We just looked at two in the previous example. Okay, we looked at one of the past papers. You should know that if bank is going to be affected positively, bank is going to be seen as an asset that's increasing and if the asset is increasing it doesn't matter why it's increasing so it could have increased because I sold something it could have increased because I got capital from the owner it could have increased because I rendered a service it makes no difference all those other accounts are going to be on the credit side your debit is going to be for the bank accounts what is bank bank is an asset if it's an asset, it's going to increase. Because think about it, if you're receiving more cash, are you getting, are you getting more cash or less cash? You're getting more cash. Okay, then you've got a rule that shows the plus and the minuses for the different accounts. Okay, so for an asset, where's the plus? On the debit side. Okay. Cash payments. What's happening? I'm paying. If I'm paying, what do we use to pay? Cash, money. When I'm using cash to pay for something, it doesn't matter what I'm paying for. I could be paying off a liability, which is a loan. I could be paying for an expense. I could be paying for an asset. It doesn't matter. All of those accounts will be debited. 
either the loan is going to decrease and the loan decreases on the debit because it's a liability and you know what the rules are for a liability because you studied that in week one or I know this is an expense that I need to record okay so if I'm buying stationery is stationery an asset or an expense it's an expense because you use it up okay I don't have any future benefit if I use up my stationery okay we spoke about a printer and the paper the paper used in the printer is an expense the printer is the asset because I still have the printer after I've printed something I don't have the paper after I've printed something okay the papers used up you can't use it again okay so that's looking at basics and bank is what we're focusing on here when I have a payment so bank is an asset that will always decrease so when looking at a T account, you're going to have to draw up a T account of the bank recon. In the bank recon, you need three things. A general ledger bank account, which is what I've shown you here. And in the general ledger bank account, you're going to have a debit side and you're going to have a credit side. Okay, the debit side refers to the left and the credit side refers to the right. That's all it means. Okay, there's nothing else that, so debit doesn't mean anything other than the left. Same thing with credit. Credit is just the, le uh, the right. Okay, so left debit, credit right. What are my receipts going to do to my bank account? We just spoke about it. It's going to increase the account. That's why I circled that there, asset increase. So where am I going to show that? On the debit side or credit side of the T account? On the debit side, exactly, because that's seen as inflow. So when I've got a bank receipt CRJ entry it's going to go on the debit side of the T account which is the general ledger and then on the right I'm going to show any payments we just spoke about it what does a payment do to the bank account decreases it's logical okay if I pay I'm going to reduce the bank we just said there's no other way to make a payment other than to use cash you're either going to use physical cash or you're going to use debit card or um, check account or EFT or something. All right, but there's going to be cash that's going to be coming out of the bank in, in some way or another. Either the physical cash or transferring from one account to the next. Make sense? Okay, so this will always go on that side. Cash payments will always be on the credit side of your bank tier account. Now we need to look at some theory belonging to the bank recon. The bank reconciliation is looking at a process of checking. That's what it is. Why do we check? Things need to be accurate. Okay, so what are we going to be checking? How do you know what's in your bank account? Okay, can I, can I assume that you guys all have bank accounts? Do you? Okay. So if you do, how do you know what's in your bank accounts? Good. How do you know what the balance is? Yes, by giving you a bank statement. And obviously we're dealing with businesses. So businesses have bank accounts. Businesses receive bank statements. Businesses need to check that what's in the bank and what's in their records are the same. So when I'm focusing on a bank reconciliation, I'm going to be looking at assets or liabilities. But I'm going to be looking at short term, which is less than 12 months, not long term, current assets. That's why the, the topic for this is long term and short term assets, current and non-current. What do I call bank if it's a liability? Do any of you know? We actually saw it in one of our activities that you've done previously. What do I call bank when it's a liability? Well, it would have a credit because it's a liability. It's going to be called a bank overdraft. What type of account is that? Liability. So those are the two things that you could see in a bank recon question. 
you could see either an asset, okay, bank balance being favorable, or a liability bank balance being unfavorable. Okay. Importance of mon uh, monitoring and managing cash. Okay, obviously the textbook gives you additional information, so it's always good to know why we're doing this. I'm just going to sum it up in like one sentence. Does the business value its cash? Yes. So do you think the business is going to monitor and manage it? Of course they will. Right, businesses value cash because businesses go bankrupt when they don't have enough cash. If you can't pay your suppliers, what's going to happen? You're going to get taken to court. You're going to need someone to represent you because you can't pay. Do you agree? And you're going to get sued because you can't pay. So what must the business do? Reconcile. They need to check what's in our records to what's in the bank's records. Because we need to make sure that our books balance. Right, so when looking at a bank reconciliation, you're confirming internal records with external records. Right, the external record would be the bank statement. The internal record would be the bank general ledger. That's what you're looking at. So do you guys agree in your books, are you going to see a T account for bank? Yes, you will. What are you going to see in the T account for bank? Debits and credits. Will you see a balance? Yes, you will. So what must we do? We need to confirm what's in the bank to what's in the business's bank account. That's what you're looking at. Does that make sense? Great. So what accounts do the separate parties record? Well, let's think about it. If I'm the business, okay, that's the focus. Is everything from the business point of view? Yes, everything is from the business point of view. So as a business, if you've got a favorable bank balance, are you going to show a debit or a credit? A debit. Why are you going to show a debit? It's favorable. So bank is a asset. See, that's what I want you guys to tell me. It's what it, what it is it. Right, so there's the first bit. If we as the business have a debit because it's favorable, what is the bank going to have, the external party? It's going to have a liability. Does that make sense? Okay. So what bank balance do you want to see on your bank statement? Do you want to see a debit bank balance on your bank statement? Or do you want to see a credit balance on your bank statement? Okay, so you guys all have bank statements. Do you want to see a debit balance or do you want to see a credit balance? On your bank statement. Yes, okay, you want to see a credit balance on your bank statement because the bank statement is whose books? The bank's. Right, so if you've deposited money into the bank, does the bank owe you? Yes, you've given them a deposit. They need to give you back the deposit because it's yours. Does that make sense? So what is that to the business? An asset. What is that to the bank? A liability. Does that make sense? Okay, so you've got two parties here. See, party number one and party number two. Right, if you've got the asset, then they've got the liability. Okay, because you've taken money and you've given it to them. They owe you because it's yours. If it's the opposite, I'll have a liability in my books. So that means I've taken too much from the bank account. That's bank overdraft. Okay, bank overdraft means you've overdrawn on your account. Okay, certain banks allow you Okay, to have a facility, uh, it depends on your profile. Not all banks will give you a bank overdraft. Businesses that have good credit ratings will get access to credit. And a bank overdraft will be something that they could access. Meaning, if my balance reaches zero, can I still take more cash from the bank account? Yes, then it becomes a bank overdraft. Now who's owing who? You as the business owe the bank. 
So if you owe the bank, it's going to be seen as a liability in your books because you owe, and it'll be an asset in the bank's books because they're going to get something from you. Make sense? All right, make sure you write that down so you've got both. You need to know both sides of the transactions because you're going to reconcile. You're going to check both sides of the transaction. Guys, happy with that? Okay, that's theory. The theory will be applied later on. Let's continue. Oh, still need it. but you also have your books. Okay, so the bank statement is something that the bank gives you to tell you how much is in the bank account. Are you going to have a general ledger account? Are you going to have this? Yes, you will. Okay, what is this? This is the internal records of the business. Okay, so you have to account for what's in your books. Every time I have a receipt, it goes to the cash receipts journal. Every time I have a payment, it goes to the cash payments journal. Where do both journals go to? The ledger goes here. Bank increases or bank decreases. And then I'm going to have a balance here. which is either going to be good or bad. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to check, is the balance here the same as the balance in the bank statements? Okay, because remember, the bank statement could have errors on it, right? Because okay, remember, you, you know what you've done on your bank account, okay? But then you still get information from the bank. Because what happens if someone directly deposits money into your bank account? Are you going to know that? No, you won't. How will you know that someone has directly deposited money in your bank account? When you look at the bank statement, exactly. Okay, so do you see how there could be discrepancies? Meaning, something that you have could be something that the bank doesn't. Or something the bank has might be something that you don't have. Okay, another example. Let me ask you this, okay? We're almost reaching the end of the month. Right, so today, this month is August. So August has 31 days. If your bank statement comes on the first of the next month, right, so that means cut off. So the bank is going to send you a statement on the first of every month. Do you agree? So now if I go to the bank today and I go into the branch and let's say today was the 31st of August and I'm going to deposit deposit money into the bank account today, which is 31st August. Okay, am I going to record something in my cash receipts journal? Of course you are. Why? You deposit money into the bank account, you receive money. Okay, could it be from the sales or services or whatever? Okay, so then you would have recorded debit bank, let's say it's 100, and credit sales, let's say it's 100. Are you going to show this in your books? Of course you are. So if you're showing this in your books, you're going to see 100 over there. And this happened on the 31st of August. Right? And you went at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, where the bank was just about to close its doors. 
are you going to see 100 Rand in your August bank statement? No, you won't. You won't, right? Because the bank's going to take a few hours to process that. The banks that aren't as efficient might take a day or two, depending. Okay, so you're only going to see your deposit when? In September. But you're going to get August's statement from the 1st of August to the 31st of August. And you're going to say, well, where's my 100 Rand? I don't see it on my August bank statement. But have I recorded in my books? Yes, I have. Is there a discrepancy? Yes, there is. See, those are the things we're going to look at. Okay. That's why we need to look at the next bit, which is this. The reconciliation. Okay, what does it mean to reconcile? It means to check. Okay, so I'm checking what's in my books to what's in the bank's books. So the bank is going to have a bank statement and my account, which is the general ledger, is going to have an amount. And we need to confirm that those two amounts are the same. That's what you're doing in a bank recon. Does that make sense? Right, so question. Can I change or adjust our bank account? Yes or no? Of course you can. It's your account. It's your general ledger, right? So, of course you can change it. Can I change or adjust our bank statement? No, you can't. Right, if you don't agree with the bank statement, you just can't cross out those amounts and add a few zeros and say, well, that's how much I've got. Can't do that. Okay? You can't fix and cross er errors out. What happens if the bank makes a mistake? Or those bank charges. Do you like bank charges? No. Can we just cross them out then because we don't like them? No, we can't. Okay, we can't change the bank statement. So I can't adjust or change it. What do I then do? I need to reconcile. Okay, so we'll see later. This is adjust, and this is reconcile. Okay, so if I can't change what's on the bank statement, I need to report it to the bank. Then they need to change it. And that's why it's a reconciling item. So a tip. Always consider whose records are correct or accurate. Accurate means who's correct in terms of, like, did you do what you're supposed to do? Sometimes you've done something that you shouldn't have. Then you need to fix or change that. Okay, that's the tip. So when looking at a bank recon, we're always going to check who is correct. That's what we're going to be looking at. Right, so I want you guys to think about some of these different things that you could have on your bank statement. We've mentioned a few examples already. I want you guys to think of a list. So you guys all have bank statements. What events or transactions can arise that will not reflect in the bank statement? So what things can you do that won't appear in your bank statement? And I also want you to think about this. What events or transactions can arise in the bank's books? Meaning, you will see it on the bank statement, but you won't see it in the general ledger account. Take a minute or two to think about some of these different examples. All right, what did you guys come up with? Give me some examples. Anything. Petty cash? Petty cash won't appear in either. Things that are bought, okay, things that are bought could appear um, on your bank statement. So, um, <coughs> if you withdrew money, bought something cash, no, not quite. No. What else? Come, give me things, items. Okay, let's start with bank charges. Which category would a bank charge belong to? No, which category? 
So is a bank charge an event or transaction that arises that will not reflect in the bank statement or something that will arise in the bank statement that will not reflect in the bank account? Which one? Top or bottom? bottom. Correct. All right. A bank charge is going to be seen as what? An event or a transaction that arises in the bank's books, meaning the bank would have charged you a fee for having a bank account with them. Do you agree? So if the bank is charging you, or for your transactions, okay, so every time you swipe, you do electronic payment, there might be a little charge. Okay, if that's the case, where do I see that? On the bank statement. Am I going to record that in my books? Not during the month, because I won't know what the charges are. When will you know what the charges are? Only when you get the statement, correct. Right, so this is something that would appear on the bank statement, but not in my books. Okay, here's another one. Debit orders. What is a debit order? From the bank account. Will you see that in your books? Probably not, unless you've captured it. Another, th another thing, direct deposit. Good, interest is a good one. See, interest. Okay, so those are the ones that you could have mentioned. Direct deposits. If someone directly deposits money into your account, you're not going to see that until you see the bank statement. You won't know until you see the bank statement. Does that make sense? Okay, and then you've got debit orders and stop orders. Bank charges, interest was a good one that you mentioned. Okay, interest, you won't know how much the interest is until you see the bank account. The bank account or the bank statement is going to show you exactly what's on the actual bank account or bank um, statement rather. Okay, does that make sense? Are we, are we okay with that? Things that you won't see on the bank statement, outstanding checks, meaning if I've paid and the bank hasn't recorded yet, that's outstanding. If I've deposited into the bank, so we said that, we said on the last day of the month, I go to the bank account and I deposit money, but I don't see it on the bank statement because of the timing difference. Okay, and then errors can appear in both. An error could either be something that hasn't been rec hasn't been captured or recorded or something that that has but is incorrect okay where the bank has done something that they shouldn't have or where the business has done something that they shouldn't have okay simple example of an error could be have any of you ever had something appear in your bank statement that you had to query okay why did you query it exactly fraud Okay, so if someone took your bank details and unlawfully loaded a debit order on your account, which possibly could happen, okay, or they might have given you something that wasn't yours. Right, so what happens, th that was, that's more negative, but let's talk about the positive. What happens if you go to your bank statement and you see, well, there's an extra hundred sitting there that you had no idea where it came from? <laughs> okay, but it's an error. So if someone reports it, it normally gets reversed. Okay, because sometimes people might have got the account number wrong. Okay, and then the money comes to your account instead of theirs. Right, so now the money went to your account instead of theirs, it'll eventually get fixed when they rectify the error. Okay, who's going to report it? Hopefully the other person, the other party. But obviously you... you Okay, but so you, you don't you don't report the good, but you would report the bad. You need to be consistent, hey? If you're reporting it period, it should be both good and bad. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's things that could appear. And here's the process. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you guys, all right, so I've gi uh, there's two questions that I have um, that we'll probably look at the one. Right, but I want you to at least go through the other, but I'll send you the details for that question. Okay, because obviously with more practice, it gets easier to do. Okay, so I'll, I'll 
go through one example with you to show you how you should do it but then if you can go through another example or more examples as well I obviously want to look at the past paper questions okay the past paper questions are asked slightly differently to the way we're going to look at it okay and the reason for that is the past paper isn't going to give you three pages of information they're going to give you one page right and the one page is going to tell you what's happening okay so this is the difference these are things that don't appear etc okay what is the process well we just said can I change the bank statement can I change the bank statement no I can't so if I can't change the bank statement is that a good place to start yes it's a very good place to start because it's not going to change right, and what bank balance am I going to look at the opening or the closing correct a bank statement is going to show you all the transactions for the month do you agree so if the transactions for the month are going to be shown in the bank statement we're then going to show what the closing balance and the closing balance is going to be the opening line item in the bank reconciliation because that's what you're looking at okay so you're looking at the closing balance in the bank statement as the opening line item in your books question two says compare the bank statement or not question two step two compare the bank statement to the journals see this is your checking so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at my, what my records say and what the bank records say and if my books and the bank books are the same then everything's good okay if they're not the same then there's something that went wrong then I need to investigate I need to check what went wrong what must I reconcile what must I adjust do I reconcile and adjust no you don't you reconcile or you adjust it's one or the other you never do both right so if it's an adjustment I'm fixing my books if it's a reconciling item the bank needs to fix their books but right. remember the trick is who's correct are we correct or are they correct if you know who's correct the bank recon is, a, is easy it's, it's such a simple thing to do okay and, and it does get tested and it does carry quite a few marks um, let's just check was it a, was there a bank statement here oh I closed the past paper okay you've got the past paper there on your desk can you check for us was there a bank reconciliation question in the October November 2016 it might or might not have been tested it normally is but obviously certain years don't test it well when I say certain years I should say certain semesters don't test it yeah that's the assignment answers that you've got okay was there a bank record just look at the front cover front cover of the page look at the time allocation just read the four questions No bank recon no bank recon okay so in that particular paper there wasn't a bank recon but obviously in other past papers there will be it just depends on what they're testing but right. you should actually hope for a bank recon because it's, it's a nice simple easy question to do okay and it's standalone but right. you don't have to know anything else other than what we just spoke about today debit means good for the business credit means bad for the business if I'm looking at the bank's perspective, so if I look at the bank statement, I want to see a credit, and I want to see a, uh, um, yeah, I want to see a credit because the bank owes me. Okay. All right. Then just a little note here about petty cash. You mentioned it earlier. What is petty cash? It's small amounts of money that's lying in the business. Exactly. Okay. So the business is going to use petty cash. To pay for small petty amounts okay that's what you're looking at right the business will have to account for the cash set aside for this function so if I'm going to be creating petty cash what am I going to do to create it apply your accounting knowledge where does petty cash come from let's start there the bank 
So what's going to happen to the bank? It's going to decrease. Where does bank decrease? On the, On the credit side. So you're going to be creating petty cash by debiting the petty cash because you have an asset that's increasing and you're going to credit the bank because you have an asset that's decreasing. See, that's why we're debiting and crediting those accounts. Okay, so it's always about basics, about rules. Okay, we need to look at debits and credits from a rule point of view, okay, from a, a, a rule-based approach. Right, so I'm looking at petty cash as being an asset, and that asset is increasing because you're getting it. Okay, so when I withdraw cash from the ATM, I'm taking money out of the bank, and I'm getting physical cash that I can use within my business. Make sense? Okay. Next bit. We looked at journals earlier. I'm, I'm relating this to something that you guys are familiar with. So you guys know what a cash payments journal is. We just looked at it today, and we looked at an example for it. CPJ means we're making a payment. Petty cash journal, we're making a payment, but it's coming from the petty cash. Right, so instead of affecting the bank, I'm not going to affect the bank, I'm going to affect the petty cash. Right, so you're going to reduce the account and you're going to debit something. Right, petty cash is going to be used for things like stationery, um, small expenses. You're not going to be buying land and buildings using petty cash. Okay, you're not going to be buying a vehicle using petty cash. Right, so when I say other account, we're looking generally at expenses. And maybe drawings. Right, the owner might take petty cash for his or her personal use. You're not really going to see other accounts there. Unless they give you things like maybe, uh, maybe you're paying off some liability. So you're paying a creditor maybe. Or you're paying off a, a, a little loan. Okay, a small loan, a micro loan, or a, um, one of those small loans. Okay, but majority in terms of examples would probably be looking at expenses. Okay, just look at the format. I've given you page references. Look at the study guide. Look at the textbook. And check the format. Okay, it's, it's the exact same format as your cash payments. The only column that's different is you don't have a bank column. You'll have a petty cash column. Okay, let me actually see if I can find one here just to show you what that looks like. Petty cash journal. There's it. Okay, so in the petty cash journal, we're not going to have bank, we're going to have, okay, they've put total here, right, or you could write down petty cash. Okay, it's just different formats. Okay, right, but it works the same as any other journal. Okay, there's your receipts and payments, these are just an extract. See, this is what we're going to look at for a bank recon. Okay. Right, then we've just got a bit of theory here to look at. We spoke about that previously. You've covered it before. Just to recap, will that apply to petty cash payments? It can. Yes. Right, so when you buy certain items, let's say I'm paying for stationery using petty cash. I need some extra pens and pencils in the office. And you're using cash to buy it. Are you going to have that? Yes. What VAT will you have? input VAT because you're buying stationery. Right, so buying means goods coming in. If goods come in, it's input VAT. Do you remember what input VAT is? What type of account? What type of element? Asset liability, income, expense, capital drawings. It's an asset. Okay, because you claim it. What, what's the liability? The liability is the output value. Why is the output value a liability? Because you've rendered a service, so you've collected 14%. Is that 14% yours? No. Who does it belong to? So, so, liability. Make sense?
uh, at the recap, we've looked at this before. I'm, I'm just showing you things that we've covered before. Okay, here's the bit of theory that I said we needed to look at from study at eight. It's literally theory, okay? Um, there are some calculations, but that's more tier counts, okay, which I wanna look at later on when we actually look at questions. Okay, so if I'm looking at trade and other receivables, what is a receivable? What type of account? Asset, why? It meets the definition of an asset, which is resource controlled by the business, rising from a past event, gives rise to future economic benefits. This does meet the definition. So who are we considering each scenario then? Trade and other receivables refers to debtors, exactly. Okay, so the debtor is generally what you're going to be looking at here. You can have other receivables. Right, we'll look at some adjustments later on. Prepaid expenses, accrued income. Those are adjustments that come up later. Right now, we're not looking at that. We're just looking at trade and other receivables. A receivable means I'm still going to get it. So it meets the definition of an asset. Debtors is a receivable. It's something that the customer is owing the business. Does that make sense? Perfect. All right, so I've given you some terms here that come out in the chapter. They talk about credit transactions, which is a credit sale because I'm looking at a receivable, not a payable. Trade payables is a separate chapter altogether. Okay, then we'll discuss that then when we get there. Right now, we're focusing on our uh, we're focusing our attention on our debtors. Credit terms apply because you're going to have T's and C's. Okay, so what is the interest am I going to charge on those accounts? When must they pay, etc., etc. What discount can I have with a debtor? Discount allowed. Why discount allowed? Because you give them the discount. Okay, so I'm going to allow them a discount because they're not going to have to pay the full amount. Output VAT is here. Why is output VAT here? Well, when looking at debtors, am I buying or selling? I'm selling. So if I sell, I'm going to have output VAT. Right? And that'll be part of the actual amount that's owed to the business. Okay, because what will the debtor owe you? The full amount or the net amount? full amount. Okay, they're going to owe you the VAT inclusive amount. You are going to keep the exclusive and you're going to pay the VAT over to SARS. Right, this is new allowances. Okay, we'll discuss what they are. An allowance is just a negative asset. It's something that allows us to present information more accurately. Okay, we'll discuss what that is just now. And then you've got a credit loss or a bad debt. Do debtors always pay? No. And if they don't pay, you need to write them off. Right, so if bad debt is written off, it's considered an expense. That's what you're looking at. Okay, so those are the accounts that you need to know. The ones that are more important, make sure you know what a debt is. Make sure you know what allowance is. Make sure you know what a bad debt or a credit loss is. An allowance is a negative asset, yeah. It might or might not be on your notes. If it isn't there, just add it. If it is there, just highlight it. Okay, so it's a negative asset. A negative asset meaning it reduces the value of the asset. Because think about it. Do debtors always pay? No. Right, so what are you looking at? You're looking at debtors at a specific amount. Is that amount going to be everything that you're going to receive? No. Okay, so your debtors might be 100. 5% of your debtors will probably not pay. Okay, and that's based on past experience. Right, so a business that has been running. Okay, sometimes you have bad customers. Customers that buy and they just don't pay. At some point in time, you need to write it off. Okay, you can chase after them, chase after them, chase after them. If it doesn't work, write it off, take legal action. Right, so we're looking at a settlement discount. A settlement discount will apply to a debtor and a creditor. But if I'm looking at a debtor, it's going to be discount allowed or discount received. 
Which one? We just spoke about it. Discount allowed. Okay, you'll never have discount received with a debtor because it doesn't make any sense. But because you're not paying, they're paying. So if the debtor's paying the business, you allow them a discount. Okay, if it's a discount that's allowed, it'll be seen as an expense. Expenses go up on which side? On the debit side, because it's an expense. Okay, that's why we're debiting the discount allowed. Okay, the reason why I've shown input voucher is later on, they don't really discuss it, but they talk about this whole scenario about discounts being what? Like expenses, similar to expenses. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail because it can get quite complicated. If you want to, you, I, I can discuss it afterwards, okay? But just to give you what you need to know, discount allowed is seen as an expense. An expense can give rise to input VAT. And that's why we sometimes record it as long as we're a VAT vendor. We wouldn't record it if there wasn't a VAT vendor. We only record input VAT on the discount if they're a VAT vendor. If the bank balance goes so down, money comes, in. money comes in, bank is an asset. Assets increase on the debit side. Okay. And then the money's going out. If money goes out, bank is an asset. Assets decrease on the credit side. Credit side is the right, not the left. Okay, credit is the right, debit is the left. Doesn't matter which way you're looking at. Okay. Right, so if you're looking at the screen, the left is that side, the right is this side. Okay. All right, so bank here is going up or down. Let's discuss that. That might make more sense. Come, guys. Bank going up or down? Going down. Going down? Going up. Which one? We just spoke about this. They're a debtor. What relationship does the debtor have to the business? They owe you. So what happens when they pay you? Your bank's going to go up. That's why I'm debiting the bank. Okay. What's going to happen to my debtors? It's going to decrease. Why? Because they no longer owe you. Okay, they've settled their accounts. Right, so that's just something to consider. We'll see this later when we do practical questions. Okay. Right, here's a note about the allowance. What is an allowance? It's a negative asset. Okay, the best way I can approach this is by thinking of your disclosure. Okay, so do you agree? When I sell, I'm going to create what? Debt. Asset increase. Okay, if a business has been operating and they've been operating for a year and the next year they don't have a certain amount of receipts, okay, that would tell them that, well, if I'm selling and if I sell, let's say 100, okay, that's the total. So if 100 represents all my debtors, a small percentage of them don't pay. And if a small percentage don't pay, can I show my users all the debtors? No, because the user isn't going to get all of the benefit. Does that make sense? Do you agree? Okay, think about it. You sell something to someone. Okay, let's use this example. You sell to me, okay? You sell to her. What are you going to show in your books? An asset liability. You're going to show an asset. Okay, because you've sold. Right, so if you're showing debtors, you're showing how much is outstanding in your books. Okay? Let's assume I'm not going to pay, but she will. Is it accurate to show the full 100% then? No. Okay, it wouldn't be accurate to show my debtor's amount and her debtor's amount if you know I'm not going to pay you. Does that make sense? 
and that and that's what an allowance is, and that's what a provision. Sometimes they call it a provision. Okay, it just means you're creating an amount to make your ac your um, disclosure more accurate. That's what you're looking at. Okay, so there's the example, 100. Am I going to show 100? No, I'm not. I'm going to show 100 minus 5%. Okay, or 100 minus 5. Because I know that 5% of my total debtors aren't going to pay. Right, so showing the full amount would be dishonest to your users. Right, because you're trying to show them the true picture. Okay, but it's based on past experience. So the question needs to tell you what happened in the past. That's what they need to tell you. Okay. Right, so if I'm looking at an allowance, what type of balance would an allowance have? Well, here's the note. Negative assets. Okay, so you guys know from your rules that you have an asset, and an asset will have a debit and a credit. You know that the asset rule is plus on this side, minus on that side. Right, am I looking at an asset? No, I'm looking at a negative asset because this is the allowance. Right, so if I'm looking at the allowance, what balance will an allowance have? A negative asset balance, and what balance does a negative asset have? A credit balance. Okay, that's what you've got. Right, so an allowance will have a credit balance. If you're going to increase the allowance, are you going to credit it or are you going to debit it? Well, let's think about it. What balance does an allowance have, a debit or a credit? A credit. So if I want to increase the allowance, am I going to credit it with more or credit it with or debit it to reduce it? If I want to increase the allowance, am I going to debit or credit it? going to credit it exactly okay because an allowance has a negative balance right so if I want to make a negative balance bigger I have to keep crediting it does that make sense okay so let's write a note there adjusting the allowance okay so increasing the allowance credit the allowance. Okay, decreasing the allowance. Debit it. Okay, that's what you're looking at. Okay. There are some really good examples in your study guide. Okay, and remember, they go through all of it in detail. All right, so I would go through those as well ahead of time. Okay, so when we get to questions, okay, so when I look at past paper questions with you and we discuss it, it's not like you're seeing this for the first time. Okay, because th at least then you've looked at some of the examples in your study guide. Okay, I I'm going to use as many of the past paper questions as I can to make sure that you guys are okay with the approach. Okay, because that's at the right standard. The ones in your textbook are very basic. Very, very basic. The ones in your study guide are very basic. Okay, the ones in your... Um, tests and exams are a little bit more um, tricky. Okay, but if you can look at those basic examples, you'll see it's really not that bad. Okay, we're just going to apply this. Okay, we can even put the slide back on later when we cover a question. Okay, it's really that simple. Just think of it as what? A negative asset. So does it have a debit or a credit? It has a credit because it's a negative asset. Make sense? Perfect. Okay, then there's just a note here about a control account. What does a control account do? It looks at everything. It's the total. Okay, I'm literally taking all my debtors and all my sales and I'm recording it in one account. Okay, so let's add to this slide. If I'm looking at my debtors account, what will debit my debtors account and what will credit my debtors account? Come, give me some things that will affect this account. Things that will affect your debtors. What transactions will affect my debtors? Okay, you're looking at returns already, no. What's the first step? How do I create a debtor? Start there. 
Yes. Okay, do you agree? In order to get a debtor, I need a sale. So credit sales is a transaction that will affect my debtor's control. How would credit sales affect my debtor's control? Increase or decrease? Think about it. If you're selling on credit, will you have more debtors or less? You'll have more. So what am I going to show here? I'm going to show sales here from the sales journal and an amount. I'm just going to put an amount, 10. What else can I see in my debtor's control account? After you've sold to someone, what do they normally do? Well, possibly. Okay, so if they return, then you'll see the sales returns here. A sale return will do what to this account? Increase or decrease? Decrease. So sale return will go here. Sales returns journal. What else will happen with this account? If they don't pay you, well, first they have to pay you. Right, and they will pay you. Some will pay you. Some won't pay you. Okay, you look, some won't pay you. You're looking at two different things. Right, so if they pay you, is it a receipt or a payment? It's a receipt. What is that going to do to the debtor's control? It's going to decrease. It's a receipt. So bank is going to decrease the debtor's control. Bank will be crediting, uh, well, crediting the debtor's control. Okay. Right, now we can talk about yours. Bad debt, credit losses. What will a bad debt or credit loss do to this account? It won't increase the debtor, so that means you write them off, you've got more. No. It decreased, that's right. Okay, you, you, you don't have more debtors if you're writing them off. Think about it. I have debtors. Those customers don't pay. So will I have more debtors or less debtors? I'll have less debtors because I'm writing off the ones that don't pay. See, that's a different account. That's an expense. Bad debt is an expense. Okay, so you're looking at the double entry. Here I'm just looking at the debtors. Okay, so you're right. You would have debited the credit losses and you would have credited the debtors. Credit losses slash bad debt. Okay, what else can go into this account? We spoke about interest. Discount allowed as well, yes. Discount correct, so there's another one. There's two actually then. How will a discount affect this account? There's the answer. Good. So you'll see discount allowed on this side. Okay, and then interest is the last one. Interest will increase this account. If you charge your customers interest. Interest income, general journal. I need to put journals here. General journal, discount allowed, cash receipts or general journal, depending on how you're accounting for. Okay, and those are all the different transactions that could take place with your debtors. Okay, you could have debtors with credit balances. That's not often tested. Okay, if you do, then you're looking at a debtor which is actually your creditor. Is that possible? Yes. Okay, when will a debtor become your creditor? When they pay you too much. Okay, so let's say they've bought from you. They've bought 10, but they pay you 12 then their account actually goes into credit because now you actually owe them too because they paid too much. And that could be possible if you give them discounts and they just pay the full amount. Possible. Okay. Right, and that covers your debtors. That's trade and other receivables. The last bit here is just a note about your accounting elements. See, this is what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about application. Okay, this is what I covered in week one and two. Okay, those are the basic, basic, basics. Right, so make sure if you haven't covered this yet, um, you do need to go back and, and watch those first two videos because that covers all the theory. Right, I can't stress this enough. This is so important. 
right? Especially for you guys, because you're not going to be studying more accounting. So for you, make it as simple as possible for yourself so that you don't have to struggle with all the different possibilities. Okay, because as I said in one of the other weeks, you can study accounting in two ways. You can remember every possible scenario and then recall from memory. That's very difficult to do because if someone gives you something different or slightly different, then you don't know what to do. Okay, with this approach, you always know what to do because you just need to relate it back to the rules. Do I increase the asset? Do I decrease the asset? Do I increase the liability? Do I decrease the liability? Okay, so today we looked at a new account. An allowance for credit losses. Okay, it's a special account. Why is it special? Because it's an asset, but it has a negative balance. So it is still an asset, but it's just recorded on the credit side. Only because it's an allowance. It's a provision. It's something that's going to reduce the value of my debtors. Okay, and I want to show you this quickly. Statement of financial position. Okay, we spoke about all of this before. In the statement of financial position, you're going to disclose your assets and your liabilities because you want to work out the owner's equity okay, as a summary. Right, so as an extract, okay, in the statement of financial position, you're going to have a section for assets. Under assets, you'll have a section for non current Okay, see, this is what you would have looked at. You don't know how to draw up statements yet. We'll learn, we'll learn about it later. This is just for later on, okay? And then what am I going to show under non-current? Nothing, but under current, I'm going to show what? Trade and other receivables or debtors. Okay, and debtors is going to be shown as brackets, the amount, so the total, okay? The total less, the allowance for credit losses. Okay, that's what you're showing. Right. And that's disclosure. Okay, you'll see all of that later on when we actually do the question. Okay, so under your current assets, you'll see debtors and you'll see the total, whatever it is, minus the allowance. Because am I going to get all of it? No. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap that out for now and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so if I know that I've sold a total of 100 and my provision is 5, what am I going to show my users? I'm going to show them 95. Okay, that's what it means. It, it's telling your user, I'm not going to receive everything. So I can't show you everything. I'm only going to show you what I actually am going to collect, which is the 95. The rest is a provision because I expect to write off the bad debt. That's what you're saying. Okay, and that's what we learned today. Okay, that's a new account that you can add to your other accounts. Happy? Great. Right, always, 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 if you can, go over the textbook if you've got that resource. Make sure you're going through the study guide examples. Right, the study guide's very good. They give you additional information and they give you examples. Right, some examples that we've covered now, um, well, not examples, some questions that we've covered now um, are some of the examples that you've looked at in your, in your study guide. Okay, so go back and look at those and then try to do those revision exercises as well. Okay, so I gave you some homework, journals. I covered journals with you today. If you can, go back and look at those revision exercises and see, can you get to the answer from the question? Right, don't just look at the answer. Do the questions, then check, uh, check it, mark it, tick it. Okay, any other questions? You guys are all good, great.